North-South Connection, welcome back to the Royal Rumble Countdown. My name is Chad Campbell from the Wrestling War Zone podcast on Podbean and on YouTube here on this channel. I am joined today by Andy Atherton, uh, who does a myriad of shows, uh, generally over on the uh, PTB Pop Experience feed, so you can check that out on any podcast apps. But Andy, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good, Chad. I love talking wrestling. Uh, I don't do as many wrestling shows. I have the one wrestling show right now. Logan and I do the NXT show right. uh, about every month to six weeks where we review uh, the product. But no, I'm great, man. I love Royal Rumble is my favorite event, and I love a chance to talk about it. I love rewatching the matches every year uh, and getting to rewatch these six for for doing this uh, little project with you was pretty awesome and, and watching it for like the specific reason why we're here was really cool actually. yeah so so we're uh the number nine yep. ranked competitor in royal rumble history and uh it's brock lesnar the uh the beast himself so that is who we have to talk about tonight so uh, yeah as andy mentioned he was in six rumbles doesn't have a real long run time through all six uh in total cumulatively he's uh in all the rumbles combined for around 45 minutes just north of that uh so he's in six rumbles he does have two wins which ties him for second with the likes of uh who hogan and sean michaels so so he's in that upper upper echelon contention as far as wins overall uh two wins uh only two final fours so if he makes it to the end he's won everyone so far uh his longest uh royal rumble appearance is in 2020 uh, which we'll talk about where he entered at number one, ran through a bunch of guys close to a record in eliminations. His shortest performance, uh, I believe, is 2023. Uh, uh, he has a couple that are just uh, around two minutes. I, I think 2023 may be his shortest just by yeah. 2022 uh, was only uh, four seconds longer. Uh, okay. Two, okay. 232, so. yeah. <laughs> So 2022, 2023, just both of them, right, right, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, mm-hmm. uh, right over two minutes long. And over the six rumbles he was in, he has 33 total eliminations. Uh, so that's kind of the raw stats on him. Uh, but let's let's just dive into him, Andy. And uh, mm-hmm. first off, just kind of give me your overall thoughts. When you think about Brock Lesnar and Royal Rumble, like what instantly pops into your mind? For me... Brock is, and and this is this goes with Brock anyway. That he's not going to be your Iron Man. He's yep. he's probably not going to be your Diesel push guy either. He's your guy that you know business is about to pick up, I guess. Yes. Or you need to reset and like kind of clear the ring because he's not. He, he looks gassed by the time he gets to the ring half the time. Yeah. So that's that's what he is like. That music hits. There could be a ring full of guys, and you know, you know, we're gonna. He's going to eliminate a bunch, and then he's going to get knocked out if it's if it's early or mid rumble. You know, like you said at the end, he's going to be there. He's probably going to win. But and with him also eliminating Brock is a big deal. Right? Yeah. And either it takes a group of people who are not in the match anymore, or it takes like a low blow and a finishing move by your your guy who's gonna who's gonna go on the mania eventually to win the belt. So yeah, that's that's what I think of with Brock. It's like okay. It's going to be a crazy few minutes, and then he'll he'll be out. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I uh, in rewatching the stuff today, it 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 felt almost like I don't know if this is a great comparison, but but it felt to me like a like if you go to a rock concert and you see them kind of play the hits, and you know, you yeah. know like you know the songs are coming, they you know they they hit you in the face and then they kind of go away. It, it was a, it's an interesting, like if you go to a, a festival or something like that and yeah. hear like a guns and roses or whatever, it's like, all right, well they have sweet child of mine. They have welcome to the jump. You know, you get that, yeah. you get in and you get out. Um, they, with, with Brock, they've done kind of a formula, uh, with For the most him. Part, yeah. and, um, you do see some progression, from like 2003, his first appearance 
uh, to kind of 2023, where I think it, it feels like we're kind of, on, you know, we're certainly on the back half of his career. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, he's kind of winding down uh, in general. So, so we'll see uh, recording this in January 2024. It looks like he may be in the Royal Rumble this year. Um, we'll, we'll see kind of what his role is so far, but I think he's one of the few individuals that, um, especially in this top 10 that has more than like five appearances, but really doesn't have that much variation in the way his appearances are handled. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like they always try to have like a, you know, a monster that kind of comes in, uh, resets the playing field or eliminates a bunch of guys that started, uh, with the diesel in 94 is kind of the first person you think of, but, but even in the way like Yokozuna handled it in 93 kind of had a little bit of that vibe too. Um, so, so since then that's been something they've tried to establish for almost every rumble and it's, it's had different levels of success between like Kane, Big Show, yeah. some of these guys that come Braun. in. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that have uh, some success, some not. But, but Barack's been very consistent uh, in his appearances and I, I would say very successful overall and um, being able to kind of craft an interesting um, persona like in the Royal mm-hmm. Rumble match itself. Yeah. Um, okay. so, so your overall favorite memory of Brock Lesnar in the Royal Rumble. I love, what is it, uh, 2020? Yeah. Where with him being, first of all, being WWE champion, declaring himself number one, and just the just the way, I mean, it. are you surprised now? You, you remember and know a lot more about wrestling history than I do, but are you surprised it took him that long to do something, like a spot like this with a guy? Because you've had guys, like he had Punk, do that one year with the kind of the straight edge or with the uh, and with the uh, new nexus, but yeah, never had really somebody like own the rumble like he did for the first half. You know, this is something that started in '97 with Austin coming in at five or whenever you know he came <laughs> in, um, where the ring gets cleared and then you know it's these guys. Uh, well, really, actually, probably the first one was actually Flair right before Piper yeah. comes in in the 92 Rumble. Uh, but Flair wasn't more like a dominant role in that Rumble. He was kind of a survivor, like it was yeah. more endurance. Um, so so I think that is where the 2020 Brock performance gets elevated uh, because it does seem like you've either had that where it was more like a new like kind of heel character uh, like an Austin, like Punk that you mentioned in the uh, 2010 Rumble uh, with the Straight Edge Society stuff. That's kind of trying to create like this new persona. Their their company's getting behind them, um, and it's more of a finesse type of guy at that point. Whereas uh, Brock really did the Diesel type push of if you come in, you're going right out right yeah. from the get go. Uh, I don't think we've seen anything that dominant i don't know if we ever will again because i think that's very tough to replicate and to be Uh as engaging as it was like it 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 got to the point where uh you know you kind of figured it was going to go that way in the beginning when he declared um and uh you know it could have gotten really long and boring and drawn out uh but but i think by the length that they did it was uh pretty impeccable booking and making it just long enough to be completely engaging. And then you got to a point why I know watching it live, I was like, he's just going to blow through like all 29 got like he's winning this, um, which made his elimination at the hands of McIntyre. I think so engaging yeah. uh, and really put him over. I mean, I, I think if you think of like, I, I know Drew McIntyre's, uh, world title victory kind of gets tainted because it was the uh the in the pc or whatever <laughs> yeah the covid mania uh so that's unfortunate you don't know how that moment would have came off on with a live crowd but i would say like if you close like if i close my eyes and i say like what's one highlight from drew mcintyre's career it's him you know eliminating Brock Lesnar in that yeah. 2020 royal rumble like I, I think that is his um his premier moment. Um, so I would say so. so yeah. I, yeah. I, would. I mean, I, I, I think that's 
Brock's best performance, and it certainly was rewatching it. Do you agree with that? Oh yeah, when he's his peak. That's okay. for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think. Um, I mean, it's easily. It's it's kind of low hanging fruit because it's easily his longest. Like I, I don't. I think it's almost triple the time of any like everything combined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, it's pretty easy, but you know, still a, a great. I mean, I, in like total Royal Rumble performances of all time, like if you just did a singular list of guys in one year, um, I would probably put that on the top ten list too. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so, so, so I think that is well deserved there. Uh, what about his least favorite? No, that that one they're saying, according to the little stat sheet here, they're saying that uh, t- uh, twenty three. So last year, yes, was his la- was his worst one. Which you know, I I can see that because as I as I go through my notes, I mean, you know, he does he gets in at uh, twelve, right? And he, yeah. he starts hitting Suplex City, and then but you kind of look at who he eliminates the three guys, and it's like Santos Escobar. Okay, that was like. You know his his first rumble. Then you, you got Dawkins and Chad Gable, and you, you get the face to face with Gunther. Lashley spears him, and Brock goes for the F five. Lashley steps out, slips out, eliminates him. So I think, based on, I would say it's his worst, and I agree with that because of of who he eliminated and how quickly he got eliminated. Yes, it was it was Lashley. You know. Uh, you know, getting him back and putting Lashley over. But if you just look at Brock as his performance in the Rumble, yeah, I would definitely say that it's it's probably out of the six is is, is worst. Yeah, I'd, I had a three kind of in contention. Uh-huh. Um, I would agree with twenty twenty three. The other two that I actually put up there are the two he won. <laughs> um, so so I think the reason he won, you know, obviously elevates those. Um but uh, yeah, 2023, I mean the, the match just wasn't really about him. Yeah. And uh it, it was a cool moment. I know um being there live, it, it 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 felt like a good time for him to come out. Like we'd had some, you know, not you're not going to be losing your mind over Santos Escobar and some of those guys that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so so when it hit, it was like, all right, here we go. Like now business is picking up after the uh, opening uh-huh. with uh, Gunther and Sheamus. So so it felt like a good bridge to get from that to the end with uh, the Edge return and then Cody and all that. So so. He, he was in, he was out, it, it was fine. Uh, 2022, I think, is an interesting one to touch on briefly. Uh, just because in re-watching it, it felt like that was kind of the most maligned the crowd was towards him. Yeah. Uh, just in winning, because it, you know, it's like, all right, here we go again. And it was going to be him and Roman again. Um, which, which just felt very like uninspired that he, he, you know, he lost earlier in the night. Now he's coming back and he's winning. It's like, Oh, you know, okay. Like here he comes again. Uh, 2003 in rewatching it. I was, I was very interested to rewatch 2003. Um, a, a wild assortment of guys are in that one, by the way, when he's yeah. in there, you got, you got, you got a uh, Gene Cena, you got very young Batista, uh, a trains <laughs> tolling yeah. around. Rob Van Dam, Kane, uh, and then of course Undertaker comes out as number thirty. Uh, Lesnar is number twenty nine that year, um, and that I thought that one was interesting in the way they did that because like Lesnar came in and he you know uh, got some offense in obviously when he came in, but because they had Taker coming right behind him, they did make Taker kind of more dominant. Um, when he yeah. came in and kind of ran through, uh, and Lesnar and Tager had that feud in the fall of 2002, uh, but but it still felt pretty fresh when they were like going face to face and toe to toe mm-hmm. with each other. So so I thought that was engaging. It's it's a very quick elimination though for him to win. Uh, Taker's distracted, and uh, oh, Maven's actually in that one too. They do yeah. a great callback that I they forgot. do a callback. Yeah, yeah. I, I I thought. You know, he was. I I hadn't watched rewatched this rumble in a long time. Actually. Yeah, and I thought he was a little sloppy. You know, yeah, Brock, Brock, it's Brock. He's very uh, raw. Yeah, he's raw. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I went to um a uh, a raw that he was in a dark match for. I think it was sometime in a few months leading up to that. 
Mm. Um, and I first time I had seen him, and I was like, holy shit! Like, like he was this guy. This kid's gonna be a beast. I, I was as I'm watching though, I'm like, did he almost botch and eliminate Taker a little early? You yeah. know, I, could have been. But yeah, he he was definitely like over exuberant uh, yeah. when he watched it. So yeah. Yeah, it, it. I this was this is probably one of the rumbles I've watched the least, honestly. Like overall, and um, I was interested oh. to rewatch. He's not in a Royal Rumble from two thousand three until two thousand sixteen, a Royal Rumble match. Yeah. So, so, so he has this huge long break. Um, yeah, uh, even six, he's six, sixteen is interesting too, because that's the one where he comes in. He, the Wyatts are dominating. He eliminates everybody but Bray. Yep. And then they they re-enter and they they call it they they and that was that was an exciting that was an exciting moment for yeah them. yeah sixteen I uh, saw the elimination on Wikipedia before I rewatched I'd forgotten that and I was like oh that don't sound great uh, but in execution I thought it worked really yeah. well that's also a pretty wild uh, assortment of talent in the match right before he comes in because you got like Stardust and. Hawk. <laughs> it's, it's all it looks like who are all these uh, guys you forget about a little bit at that yeah. point in time. And, and Braun uh, just come up too. Yes, yes. Yeah. And um and I know like that leads to an Ambrose Mania match, and he had some interaction with Ambrose uh in this Royal Rumble. He but it him. really felt like it was going to be him versus the Wyatts. It's in at at Mania just watching this match itself. And that that few kind of went nowhere, right? No, I they, yeah, they, they I, were uh, building I, it up, and then they kind of like, yeah, because I looked at that, I was like, well, did they like how much did these guys actually even interact? So I looked Bray and him up on cage match, and uh, there was a very quick tag match at Roadblock. And then that was it. Like, they did not have any yeah. singles matches. Um, and I don't think they ever had any uh, matches, period, that they overlap besides the next year's Rumble. And yeah. I don't, they weren't in it at the same time, I don't think. So, no. so it's, it's very weird. It was a, a very weird, um, very weird kind of feud. But, but I thought it was very hot. Like, yeah. like uh, with Braun. Harper, uh, Harper was growing great, and I mean, Harper, yeah. I mean, they all came in for different sides. Yeah. In. You know, it was a great spot. Your usual screw job stuff. I, I, I do think it was probably better watching this in a vacuum than at the mm -hmm. time because it was a little similar to what you saw like Kane and Big Show do in the oh, previous Rumble, yeah. uh, where they eliminated like Brian and all those guys. So, so at mm -hmm. that point in time in 2016, I know I was like, oh, come on. But uh, watching it back, I mean, the heat was good and the execution was good. So I, I think it works better now in retrospect, actually. And in 2017, they were still doing the whole, you know, he's basically Goldberg's bitch thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like... Now that one, I remember watching that one in real time. I was shocked yeah. because the Survivor Series Goldberg match was shocking. And then, you know, do it again. comes out there. <laughs> Yeah. He runs through everybody again, and you're just like, okay. And then Goldberg's music fires up, and again, it's like one of those things where it feels like, you, like when you hear 2017 in my head, like I think, like, oh, that was just like a year or two ago. It's like, well, no, I mean, that was seven years ago at this point. But to hear like Goldberg chants and like the crowd going nuts, um, and then they have those interactions with each other that they always did that was just like brief, explosive. A uh, very engaging, and yeah, at this point, this was like chapter two, where Goldberg has his number again, uh, leading to their amazing yeah. WrestleMania match at thirty three, um, and I, I thought that was really well done too. I mean, I, I for me, like twenty twenty, as we said, is easily his top performance, yeah. but I thought twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen were both very good, like yeah. resume builders for him. I don't think anything is terrible. Like no, nothing, nothing is bad here. No, it's like in terms of like what's what's your what's not not too equate to pizza, but like what's your worst pizza topping? Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like well, it's pizza. It's still good. You know, yeah. it's rock. It's gonna be there's gonna be moments you're gonna get the initial pop. The crowd's gonna react. You know, it's just something. It's it's the presence of rock. 
just being there that woo, 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 hits and then he comes out and just the, um, and all the guys sell it and the looks on his face is suplex yeah. city you know all these things are going to happen and it's still it's still good it's not always great but it's it's good it's wrestling it's what we come to expect from Brock. I don't think we ever think we'll get more than that from Brock. And, no, not, and not, we don't want more than that. He can't yeah. do more than that because yeah. I think he was legit in 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 twenty twenty. I think he was legit exhausted mm-hmm. outside that yeah. ring is why he was out ringside for so long before he went to the back. Yeah, I mean, it was it was turning as you know shades of purple. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I think like when we're recording this is a good kind of moment in time yes. to where Brock's rank well now and deserve this goes to where I'm interested to see going forward. Like, mm-hmm. because again, I mean, 2023, the match wasn't really about him. He did his thing. It was good. It was, you know, I would, I would give it a solid good. It wasn't, you know, anything amazing. It wasn't awful. It was, it was a good moment and a very good match. And so I'm interested going forward. If he begins to kind of taint, his legacy, because once you start, uh, there's just very few guys, as you'll hear in this countdown, that have over five rumble appearances and have hits every time right. out. And right mm-hmm. now, I would say, you know, Lesnar at worst is, you know, batting. He's still batting a thousand. Like he may have only got a single, but, you yeah. know, he, he's still on base. Um, so, so going forward, and, you know, I'd be remiss if we don't mention. Probably his best match ever at a Royal Rumble is the Triple Threat in 2015, which is just an amazing match. Mm-hmm. Uh, him versus Rollins versus Cena. I mean, that that's one of the best Triple Threat matches in uh, in WWE history. Uh, you know, maybe the best. Uh, I, I wouldn't argue with anybody that says that. So, so he has other stuff at Rumbles that kind of help him, but but we're kind of just this ranking was just purely yeah. on the Rumble, so we dove in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thirty three eliminations. When you hear that, does that sound about right based on what you saw? Low, high, Where based on the amount of time, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, you know, yes. I think. You know, if if you would just say, you know, he was in six rumbles, like if he's in six rumbles and he's doing like, you know, Sean time or or somebody else is kind of endurance, I, it would be a little low, I think. Yeah. But you no, know, thirty three for six rumbles and per minute, like forty five. So that's basically like, you know, yeah, it's a, it's one elimination every minute and a half, you yeah. know, or you're close to that. So yeah, he has a very good like crunchy number variable mm-hmm. uh, for his. Uh, total ring elapsed time versus his total elimination count. So, yeah. so I think I think it works well. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I feel like we've kind of dove into him. So, so any other notes or anything else you had, Andy? On I mean, I'm Brock? curious to see how many more rumbles Brock has in him. I think yep. now being part of you know the whole consortium with with UFC and everything like that, that you know, I think he's going to be in the mix for a while. But you know, I'm one of those proponents and, and i'm sure i'll get hate for this but i always think they should expand the men's because i i hate losing spots to certain things certain i think they should expand it to 40 just because there's just i just like to see a lot of guys like i i don't want it to be 50 like the greatest royal rumble but maybe mm-hmm. you know put it up a little bit because I, I i don't like giving away spots to booker t you know i don't like giving away spots to certain people you know, and kind of wasting it with like, oh, we could have seen a kid from NXT. We could have seen a, a different legend that we haven't seen. We could have had some a good celebrity spot. Look, Johnny Knoxville, I loved his spot in there when he was in. You know, there have been some. Right. You know, Drew Carey's was 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 hysterical. I, I don't I don't really consider that a waste because it, it did it did the, it did the point. You know, but um, I, I how much more we'll see Brock and Rumbles? I think we'll see him like this year, like you said. Um, yeah. Maybe a, a, a few more at the most. I don't think. I think at one point he's going to be like, "Yeah, I don't want to do this anymore." I just don't hope he doesn't hurt people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, I kind of hope it's not too many more um, because I, I I think once he comes out, if you know he's not going to be like a true threat to win, some of the mystique is off. And and twenty twenty three was very close. To that, I think I think yeah. that's where you got to be careful. Um, I mean, certainly if he's in the 2024 Rumble, you know, we'll we'll see. There's the rumors of him and Gunther or whatever, so we'll see what they cook up. Yeah. But I mean, he's 
he's now to the point where like in 2016, 2017, 2020, he had to be one of the, you know, the odds on favor to win and he didn't win. Um, now, you know, heading into the 2024 rumble, I don't even know if he would make like a top five of probable winners. He, he he's no. kind of on the outside looking in. Uh, so I don't think you want him to be in that spot where it's just like, okay, well, here's another, you know, Brock will come down. He'll yeah. chunk somebody so, on for, the mid card. And, for him know. to be a threat, he can't enter any earlier than 20, 20, between 20 and 23 is the earliest. If, if you want him to be like in people's mind, like shit, Brock could win this. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you either have to do a threat or um, really sell his mania match because uh, they they yeah. kind of did that with Goldberg and he also was a threat. But now, you know, if they want to do him versus Gunther, um, Brock eliminating Gunther, you could do that early on, or both guys go over. I mean, you could do something where, um, you know, it could be engaging and lead to something. Uh, interesting yeah. at Mania. I, I just kind of don't want him to come out there, you know, like I say, run through a guy or two and then get tossed by another, you know, big, big guy, Lashley, McIntyre, Gunther, you know, take your pick. Uh -huh. um, so, so we'll see. So, yeah, a good moment in time. But uh, number nine, Brock Lesnar, I think well deserved as we ran through, uh, you know, very aggressive, very quick and uh, violent and kind of his Royal Rumble fits his character, his yeah. performance kind of matches what you think of when you think of Brock Lesnar overall. Um, so Andy, uh, give us a plug uh, once again on where everybody can find you. Well, uh, for you like pop culture, check out the place mission pop experience, but for wrestling, uh, about once a month or six weeks, uh, Logan Crosland and I, we review uh, the TV, NXT TV, kind of give thoughts on it. We're recording actually next week, and uh, we want to, we're, you know, making sure that we do it before the Rumble because we like to make predictions on who from the NXT brand could appear in the Rumble. So, um, you know, look for that on the PlayStation Wrestling Experience, dropping uh, either uh, next week. The, the Thursday, Friday, or Saturday before the Rumble. Haven't uh, gotten that uh, decision made yet by the Podfather, but uh, it will be up. <laughs> All right. Nice. Uh, and uh, like I said, if you uh, follow me on North South Connection, you uh, mainly on Wrestling Warzone, uh, me and Justin will be talking about uh, a really cool stretch of shows here. Uh, latest show is going to be the March 10th edition which is the first raw is war and also the first spring break nitro uh so just two kind of all-time aesthetic uh situations there on a monday night and that leads right into uncensored 1997 which is a great show and then we have mania coming up mania 13 so so a lot going on in the war zone too uh but but thank you andy for joining me felt good no, not talking about Disney, which was a little <laughs> odd, but uh, quite the opposite. But uh, good to chat with you, and yes, uh, please join one. us on the countdown here. Uh, as I said, this is number nine, so we got eight more to go with a great panel. Um, I've, I've peeked behind the curtain at the spreadsheet, got a great list of, of uh, guys and gals that are going to be talking about the uh, eight people ahead of Brock on the countdown. And uh, please follow us and subscribe. And for Chad Campbell and Andy Atherton, signing off.